What's up, guys? Element here. And I am Chaco, and together we are the, the Dyad, Dyad in the, the Force. Force. Back with another reaction to The Mandalorian Chapter 18, joined by a very special guest, Corky. I mean, Julia. How's it going, Julia? <laughs> Hello. Good. As I was saying, you know, it is almost 3 a.m. I have to be up to watch this, so I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you. You can't wake up to like a text message from someone of like oh they showed up and you're like yeah exactly. well thank you you just ruined exactly. my life so. exactly <laughs> right you have to i have to be i have to be here when it happens yeah. oh hi buster uh hello buster guess who's back <laughs> buster's back my dog has decided to make an appearance he says hello as always timestamps are in the description Click it if you want to skip to the reaction. So last week, Bo-Katan is in a very interesting place, a bad one. She's lost her spark. Now, what I proposed to Chaco last week, and I'm wondering if you had caught hint of it at all, is that Din goes into the, the mines below the Civic Center and finds a Satine heirloom and brings it back. And Bo-Katan is like, oh, that's Satine's <laughs> and like it's spark. It's her iPad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sparks her it reignites her vigor to clarify not to lead to to help din and to act and so mm -hmm. to bring her out of this this kind of uh this rut that she's in um i was just gonna i i agree with the general sentiment of like something's gonna have to get her out of her depression castle um i would love <laughs> it to be um a satine trinket or something representation um someone in the comments of a tiktok video was talking about religious artifacts and how that could be something kind of cool as well to see. Um, there are some shots from the trailers that involve uh, some TIE interceptors uh, seemingly approaching the castle. So I am curious if it'll be something a little bit more imminent. <laughs> she just kind of has to go <laughs> because she's under attack. But I, I do think I like your idea better. Ever since you said she lost her spark, my brain just spiraled into Transformers. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so he has to go to Cybertron. With the old um, spark gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, something has to has to kind of uh, get that back. Um, there needs to be a coming together of the Mandalorian people. Mm -hmm. And I think, on, honestly, I think they're going to get find old artifacts and it's going to be connected to the Force. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I absolutely believe. Bo-Katan's belief that, uh, you know, down there is, the, you know, the waters aren't magical. There's nothing sacred or anything about it. Um, I, I mean, I think that we are going to see the, uh, <laughs> the, what's it called? Mythosaur? Uh, the, yes. The Mythosaur. Okay. Oh. So I think that the Mythosaur is going to be like the Mandalorian equivalent to, um, the Dweller that, uh, that we know Quinlan Voss faced oh. off against in, on Dathomir. Mm. Um, and I, I think. Yeah, I think there is going to be something special, something sacred about those waters. It's going to be related to the forest. I think they don't interact with anything like the Jedi, but it's going to reignite the belief that this is a special place, that their homeland is special and absolutely needs to be taken back. Mm -hmm. um, and that value is also going to spark something in Din's people and something has to bridge that gap, be, be mm -hmm. an, an olive branch. And I think eventually Grogu is going to be that olive branch for all of the people. We did see in the trailer <laughs> that he found an old helmet. And mm. I've postulated to many people that it could be Tar's helmet, which could bring things full circle with the Darksaber. We'll have to see as yeah. we get into chapter 18 of The Mandalorian. <gasps> I like how she said Mythasar. Mythasar. Bo Katan Kreez. <laughs> the way he says her name is so funny to me. House. They lost sight of the way. She once laid claim to rule it's Mandalore, like Pan and Han. The uh, yeah. Yeah. you now possess. I, I flipped out when that's I saw this. That planet has Ugh. been ravaged, plundered, and poisoned. That tapestry. I, I've spent so much time dissecting everything in this castle. The um the stained glass, the colors are the same colors as Satine's um teal and purple gown. Um, oh. I think they're like geometric Ooh. representation of flowers. Like the stained glass windows, you see um, the colors are very familiar, and I think they're like abstracted flowers. That's my current guess. Interesting. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, and the little fragment uh, he found. There's a scripture written on it um, in in Mandalore. Oh, we have a swoop race. Oh, <laughs> drift. Boy, I don't know. I mean, lucky for you, business is slow. 
thousand credits. I'm still fascinated by the way that Star Wars still has physical money. I'm so fascinated by how that person was able to get the money out of his pockets. <laughs> With little suction cup things. Specifically the, the calamari flan. Uh, mm. Just to have jiggly money. It's weird. Tell the job was the left. I mean, I would take it. I love flop. I had to explain quite re recently. It wouldn't. It wasn't flan that was calamari flavored. It was just from Moncala. You're lucky I'm a softie. I like how she's running a scam. That's funny. Oh, yes. friend. Go strip another speeder. It's Punta Eve. It's right. Oh, it's Punta Eve. Can we call back to Phantom Menace? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Here he is. Oh. Whoa! Oh my god. <laughs> okay, Grogu. <laughs> Parkour. <laughs> you know how much Isley gets during Boonta Week. I'm looking for a replacement <laughs> IG memory circuit. I love when she speaks. <laughs> Sorry, pal. No chance, cubes. They can't find the part? Nope. No chance. No chance. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Which is why I think you should buy this beauty here. Oh, Skippy. I can't use an astromech. I need a droid that can explore oh. and test the atmosphere. Make sure it's safe. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> hey, get right back here. Right back here, scary droid. Of course you are. <clears throat> Looks like the R5's got a bad motivator. <laughs> You don't settle your He's a very anxious droid. I'm worried <laughs> about him. And because it's Boonta? Did you say oil bath? <laughs> oh, come on now. Don't be a coward. <laughs> oh, we're gonna see the Boonta Eve fireworks. Wow. The mind's up. Dang, we're just jumping straight into it. Hell yeah. The, episodes, uh, the way is shut. Sorry, Speak, friend, a and enter. <laughs> You're gonna be like a lot of Minds of Moria reference. <laughs> no, we, we love it. Was once green and beautiful. Uh, Back when the songs were written. It's fine. I'll be fine. The home world of our people. Every Mandalorian can trace their roots back to this planet. He lands and goes, Melon. <laughs> you know what? I have no memory of this I've never been there either on that moon. So he Ocatina. is from Concordia. Oh, is he? Uh, yeah, that makes okay. sense. And that's Kalevala, where we visited bo -Katan. Well, he grew up there. He didn't say he was born there. To, to be pedantic, sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the book says he's from Aquitina, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess he was watch... born on Concordia then, right? Well, the watch it was... Um, all the warriors were exiled to the moon, too. Yeah. Concordia. Yeah. The armor said that they survived because they were there, so that would make sense that that's where Din was. So he's born on oh, no. Akvatina and raised by the Watch. Yeah, on Concordia. Concordia. That'd be, that's my guess. Din, be careful. <clears throat> R5 has no shielding. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh boy. I mean, neither does like his engine and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. Oh, Mandalore, what have they done to you? <laughs> Looks like the fusion bombs from the purge disrupted the magnetic field around the planet. Uh oh, jeez, fusion bombs. With anyone out of atmosphere, so we have to be careful. Down here, we're completely cut off from the rest of the galaxy. Well, that doesn't sound good. <sighs> Unless it's a rouge. And there's something else jamming him. That's, mm, yeah. It could be true. It's probably not, but I can dream, right? There's definitely a, a Tal's here. Go over to that split in the rock and take mm. an air sample of the ruins below. Okay, so that might answer your question halfway, Chaco. There is a access port from the bottom, but there might be like a little, little hatch for Grogu going into the cockpit. I mean, it's 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 horrifying, but also it does look cool. So at least there's that. <laughs> So I got that going for me. 
<laughs> right. Be a baby. Uh oh. I feel like that dot's gonna disappear. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. <laughs> Come in. Do you read me? Not supposed to leave your baby unaccompanied, then. <laughs> At least leave the windows down. <laughs> yeah. Oh. His ears are bigger, right? Don't worry, kid. Maybe. I'll be right back. He's, his ears seem bigger. Seems like he's grown. <laughs> he's pouting more <laughs> often now. He's got separation anxiety. <gasps> oh. Oh my god. There's Corky School. No, I'm kidding. I can't do it. But it's definitely <laughs> down here. Is the thing. It's, Ooh. it's the towels! Um, what, what are they doing? What, what are they... Uh, oh, no. no, that was... They had some skin showing. Okay, they don't look like the towels anymore. Oh, is R5 okay? <laughs> Just chilling. Oh. Oh, poor guy. The toxicity of the city. The charts were wrong. The atmosphere is breathable. Ooh. Oh, excellent. Tan was right. Mandalore is not cursed. Well, I mean, there could be other things that are cursed. <laughs> Let's not... I mean, those guys, for one thing. <laughs> yeah. Curse can mean a lot of things. Like you can right. go that fine down there and find size snoodles. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what might be lurking for you. This is a very quiet episode. It's very like intense because there isn't a lot of like score happening. Oh, I forgot it was jetpack. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's a good thing Grogu can fly. Yeah, that is good. That is such a great, like, image. <laughs> Me as a titan trying to slow down before I hit the ground. <laughs> is that your mythosaur, Choco? <laughs> it needs to suck down some energy and grow real big first. Oh, he's his little... Egg has lights on it. That's that's good news. <laughs> These waters should flow down to the mines. I love exposition, Din. He's one of my favorite forms of Din. <laughs> he just has such a nice voice for it. Yeah. Which is why I'm happy Grogu came back. Because like this in just pure silence <laughs> would <Exactly>. be weird. <laughs> exactly. He's got to have someone to expose it to. <gasps> Mm, doesn't look old enough to be Tars. Uh. <laughs> what is that? What is it? What is it? I'm sorry. It, it's, it's Darth Maul again. <laughs> <laughs> they brought him back, guys. I was not expecting mecha crap, I'm going to be honest. I, I feel like we're going to find another Mandalorian group down here protecting people from looting Mandalore anymore. Oh. Is that... Oh. Legion, is that you? I'm sorry. <laughs> who is this? What is... Who is this bug... This bug man? I like him. That's like a human... That's a human eyeball, right? It's humanoid, but I think it looks like a a life form inside a robot form. Uh, are we gonna see Grogu wield the dark saber? <laughs> so we had to watch Joel lay on a mattress for a few episodes, and now we gotta watch Din. <laughs> 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 they see That's me rolling. Him. That's just his hot rod. You know what? What are the chances Bo-Katan's already there? 
Or not. Just saying. Alright, this is like a Disney ride, like Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm into it. Okay, this makes sense now. Now that they have a droid, it. it oh can my pilot. gosh! <laughs> he just points. Adorable. <laughs> Presenting Grogu. <laughs> Majesty. I love this little man. Your Majesty. Oh my God. An unscheduled visitor. Schedule count one. <laughs> I think this is the shot I was talking about. Let's get rid of him once and for all. Relax. Oh, don't do that. Team. <laughs> Got me. What happened to him? <laughs> Download the app and find out where they were. No real way to communicate. Oh, that's that's when you see the Fang going to Mandalore. They really are know. accelerating things, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think this is the first time she's been back to Mandalore since the night? a good question. She's gonna have some feelings. I'm all for it. My heart's gonna break. Say her name. Say it. Crooker. <laughs> 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 I like how even in her rut, we're getting to see her do things. Mm. She's doing things, all right. <laughs> She's doing things for his chuckle. <laughs> you are no longer Mandalorian. My Satine. family rules it all. Satine. Shh. <laughs> Grogu's like, I didn't realize there was going to be a quiz at the end of this. <laughs> hey, it's Exposition Bow. Exposition Bow, yay! Welcome. I honestly thought that was him. <laughs> what about your sister? I don't about us, but there was a time we actually got along quite well. Fought side by side. I mean, course? you weren't on their side, but, yeah, but I can't leave. <laughs> My heart is beating so fast, not because I'm frightened, but because she keeps saying things that are close to things I want to hear. Not close enough. Yeah. <laughs> My family. Who? You knew Jedi. Which ones? I just love how she was able to snuff that out. What are these? I thought they were towels from their eyes, but... Yes! I was like, use the glowing shield? That's what I was thinking very loudly. She said you're dead. Those are alamites. <laughs> alamites. A weird crab man. Okay, but how, how many hours a day you think he's just underground waiting for someone to pick up that helmet? <laughs> What is he? His blood? Oh, it's a glaive. Oh, snap, sword and board, let's go. Like that. Did I, can't I hate horseshoe crabs even more. Trying to say something. Hell yeah. Uh. 
Yeah. There's no Give way the she Obi-Wan lost special. it to Moff Gideon. It was definitely the Night of a Thousand Tears. Everything was exploding. Like, she just, like, dropped it. <laughs> Moff Gideon was waiting underground in a big crab armor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. She's just so badass. There's just no way. So Din lost it in combat to the crab thing and then she won it. <laughs> oh god. You're a kid. There's nothing left. Satine. Great anxiety. Now memory. I was ruled here for a brief time. Now it's destroyed. Can you appreciate the irony? You can take off your helmet, come on. Pog soup, okay. You should rest. I'll get you back to my ship soon enough. So is that where all the pogs went after the 90s? <laughs> what are you talking about? Without the creed, what are we? What do we stand for? Our people are scattered like stars in the galaxy. You'd never find them on your own. Not in all this wreckage. What did she say? Thank you. This is the way. Thank me until you see me. <laughs> <laughs> she takes him there. It's like a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> the entrance to the mines of Mandalore. She just keeps getting there right before mm -hmm. and then turns around. <laughs> They loved watching the princess recite the Mandalorian tenants as her father looked on proudly. Such a heartwarming mm. spectacle. This is such great lore. <laughs> Maybe he was proud. I know he was. I didn't embarrass him in front of everyone. Your father sounds like an interesting man. I would have liked to have known him. He was a great man. R.I.P. Daddy Kreeth. <laughs> right, but <laughs> hello. <laughs> Come on, you. <laughs> You're, we're, we've got one. <laughs> Mandalore the Great is said to have tamed. Mandalore the Great. This is it. I thought they were going to go the ultimate route. I love this episode so much. My name. And the names of the ancestors. That I shall walk the way of the Mandalore. And the words of the creed shall be forever forged in my heart. <clears throat> it's just an alamite, Chaco. It ain't no mythosaur. Oh, wow. This is surprisingly deep. I might actually lose my shit if there's an actual mythosaur down here. <laughs> what is it with Din getting all, like, snatched? <laughs> I like to believe nothing grabbed him. He just sinks really fast. <laughs> <laughs> really heavy armor. Eyeball. Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah. Wow. So now Din has to tame a mythosaur? I mean, yes, great ending, but you were so close. I was gonna, he didn't pressurize his suit before going in there? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly kind of what I was expecting, which is how much can they say without saying anything? <laughs> which is both exciting and frustrating. Like my family, my father, but like not going into those details. And I think part of it is not wanting to alienate people who haven't seen other things, but also a lot of this is new information for everyone. Incredible to just, the amount of lore to dissect in this episode is overwhelming. I don't think anybody would be uh, alienated if they dropped Satine. I mean, <laughs> it's just a name, it's just her sister. It's not it's like just her she's sister's still dead. living. But I mean, like Bo-Katan exists in here enough to look into Bo-Katan, mm -hmm. then, then I think I think this would be OK. It's just one step further in that same direction. I was surprised at how much there was no horizontal storytelling where it was like, go find Bo-Katan. And mm -hmm. then like we go join Pelimato at the Boonta Eve and then I'm going to sit through like 10 minutes of 
something else. Like they really just yeah. like linear straight through. In in season one, this would have been three episodes. How do you think um, Bo Katan feels about her sister and how her sister ruled? It's it's really interesting to me because she's talking so much about this great civilization and this ruined city, and it represented everything that Death Watch hated. Um, and so it, it, you know, how much of that is the amount of time she spent sort of processing and coming to terms with. Um, what has been lost. Um, so it's very interesting to consider <laughs> how her perspective has changed um, in that regard. The way she's talking about wanting to unite the clans makes me think she does have respect for that way of ruling now because that was in many ways what Satine wanted to accomplish. So yeah, it's I'm sure a lot of regret because at this point it's too late to realize that her sister might have been on the right track. I think more, more likely than not, she's she's reconciled with it there's one line in this episode that really says a lot about the way she she views things now and that was you know it made us weak to continually fight each other over reasons too confusing to explain and i feel like that was her way of being like yeah we had peace we my sister wanted pacifism and neutrality and we created so much upheaval with the death watch mm -hmm. and it made us weak to be fighting each other. And so I think at the very least, to some degree, she feels like yeah. it, it could have been a better outlook to accept her choices instead of creating this, yeah. this uh, chaos. Can I real quick talk about something timeline wise that's making my brain hurt a little bit? Absolutely. Okay. So based on Bo-Katan's new age, she's approximately Ahsoka's age, right? So she's like in her mid to late forties. The idea of her reciting the creed for her father who would have been alive to have heard her recite it with the idea of Satine being in charge and at one point being on the run. Like I'm trying to make this all work and I'm just absolutely fascinated by how they're gonna do that. I mean, how old was the boy we saw in the beginning? Is that the standard age to take the creed? Cause that's about a 10 year old. And by 25 BBY, you know, that's, that's so late. So I'm just, the amount of timeline well, shenanigans happening here is fascinating. So I would say this, uh, and this is obviously purely speculation because we just got information like 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, so a, we, we don't quite know how old that kid was, but that uh, that kid could have been a uh, found link. Mm -hmm. So they, it could have been a kid that they found who now is old enough to make a choice. And that's why it's happening at this age versus her being part of the royal family mm -hmm. that's that's where yeah. my mind went yeah even if she's i'm just thinking if she, even if she's five years old that pushes so, sorry i'm just thinking about the idea that satine had to return to rebuild their world and i'm wondering how close to the phantom menace does that push that i also and see now i, I want to now i also want sabine to jump into the mix because i want to know about <laughs> their relationship you know um mm -hmm. how that has progressed from then do you do you think uh bo katan harbors any ill will after sabine created a machine that kills mandalorians and named it the duchess <laughs> about that in rebels it seems like at this point i think they're over yeah it. yeah <laughs> i think they're they're probably hopefully united Listen. uh i mean <laughs> you can't name someone after her sister and you know and you still yeah it's not necessarily true the like, sister because you know duke duchess and now if she if she named it satine but i think it was just the duchess because it's just like you know the previous yeah. ruler was a duchess so uh, but uh, like if you're like this forces mandalorians out of their armor <laughs> so they can't fight uh it just it felt on the nose but bo katan fighting with the dark saber I... listen there's I, I said it during the reaction. There's no way Bo Katan lost to Moff Gideon, especially seeing how Moff Gideon lost to Din. He doesn't he doesn't strike me as someone who has very particular sword skills. Yeah, Maybe I had. wonder if it, yeah. he ain't he ain't no spring chicken, you know? <laughs> I mean he can fight, but he he certainly didn't give Din so so much trouble that you would think that he could overpower Bo Katan. Because right now I would put Bo even even as far as with the dark saber i would put bokatan a couple of levels above din in terms of fighting prowess oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm guessing it's some sort of exchange where she thought by giving it up, she could secure some sort of safety or escape. Mm-hmm. Moff Gideon, you know, just double crossed her. That would be my guess. I think a, I think a bomb was like right next to her <laughs> on the Night of a Thousand Tears and it dropped and she lost it. Yeah, there was there was a bomb and she had to run in and she could only bring one thing with her. And it was like photos of her and Satine that she grabbed <laughs> instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tapestry behind her, right? On one side, it's the Mandalorians mm-hmm. fighting the Jedi, and on the other side, it's a team. <laughs> That's what I imagine, at least. Yeah, that would be nice. At this point, they're going to be more or less working together, I would guess, in some form. You know, finding other Mandalorians, trying to get them to come to some sort of common agreement. Um, I wonder if it will be Bo like believing in him as the new Mandalore, especially after seeing the Mythosaur and think, thinking like maybe something is mystical, a uh, mystical is happening. Um, but yeah, I'm mostly just excited to go try to sit down and make the timeline work because that's my favorite hobby. I'm not saying that sarcastically. It is my favorite thing. Oh. Yeah, this is incredible. The amount of this is an episode I'm going to have to go back and rewatch and break down uh, and look mm-hmm. at all the little details because had a lot of fun the first episode doing that. I mean, this is, again, what we were expecting because she needed to get her her faith back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think she, she recognizes like, okay, we, we said these things in front of our subjects, but really we use this belief system as a way of control. And then finding out there is actually some truth or power she lost, that. that her family lost. And I think that's why whenever they do like recaps, I'm always really interested in what they mm-hmm. choose to show us of her trying to rule by blood and dark saber alone by just those two things alone. What was the thing that she was missing? Maybe that yeah. was the belief and it's the, the their belief. The mythosaur. Good job, Chaco. Okay. Yeah, you called that. But I'm next, calling a lot of stuff tonight. <laughs> next week's going to be Quinlan Voss. I guarantee you. I'm just kidding. No, I, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> uh, I wonder what else survived down here at this is Quinlan. <laughs> he's just he's just going around um, hanging out with all of his dad's friends, which is <laughs> literally everyone in the galaxy. So there's a lot of people to get through. <laughs> yeah, I really like how uh, how things are shaping up with this season so far because Bo-Katan, like you said, Julia is positioned to help Din and be Mm -hmm. that mentor figure with all of her knowledge. And Din, inversely, is there to provide her with that kind of the power behind the words. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to give him like the the reality of it all. And he's going Mm -hmm. to be like, well, this is what holds power with our people. Also, because I called it. <laughs> so everyone was like, oh, Din and bo are going to fight. He's like, no, she's going to mentor him. And so yeah. I love this. I hope she calls Sabine. And like Din's going to be like, by the way, how did you handle that saber so so agilely? And then she's like, oh, oh uh, let me call Sabine over. She, yeah. She'll let you know how, to, how how it's done. Yeah, that would be a natural um, segue into Sabine. Well, that'll do it for this reaction. Thank you to Julia, uh, resident Corky truther. Um, for joining us, uh, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more videos like it in star Wars, but that's it on to the next one for light and for life. We are all the Republic and Chaco's got predictions. Corky's alive.